So they're just going flat on the wall. Oh, these are? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we don't, uh, won't need to screw those up. Three new portraits were unveiled in the Mirror Mirror exhibition um, last year. And those three new portraits are now going on permanent display. So they're being rehung in the People and Places Gallery, uh, where most of our portraiture in the collection is on display. Three people that are living in Canterbury in, in the community today. So straight away, the conversations are kind of different. And I think the most exciting thing about these three new portraits is that it shows that the collection is something that's always changing and developing. We very rarely work with artists who are still alive. I mean, that was the whole point of the project in that a lot of the pictures are representative of Victorian Canterbury. So this was to get a, a representation of 21st century Canterbury. And it is quite unusual that we get a lot of background material from the artists. And quite often from old paintings, we might have one letter with a couple of sentences in about where it came from. And this, this is totally different in that we've, we can actually speak to the artists. We've got their preliminary sketches. So you've got a much rounder view of how the thing was produced. Those portraits will be here as part of history and people in the future will be able to look back at the time we're living in now in the way that we do looking at these other historical portraits that are on display. We can see a portrait of a Tudor aristocrat in fine jewellery, a really traditional status portrait about wealth and power. Nearby there'll be a portrait of a contemporary drag queen in a boa, in a wig, in very exaggerated makeup and um, earrings made of glass. So the conversations about what portraiture is, what it was in the past, what it is today. These conversations are going to be much more animated from now on. Through my placement with the National Portrait Gallery, I worked on the Picturing History resource, which is an amazing um, digital resource for schools and learners. And so that was really valuable in developing uh, our own resources for the Beanie. We're developing three online learning resources and they'll dissect the portraits and help people interact and engage with the portraits and learn a bit about how they were made and maybe the sorts of uh, ideas and issues that are, are present in those works. The more you can tell someone about the backstory of a, a picture and the human side of it, the better. We developed audio descriptions for the three new commissions that were part of that exhibition. When we received the audio descriptions, they were, they were really rich, that this was actually maybe a great way for anyone to engage with the portraits. This is a description of a portrait of Delilah Tickles. The artist says of her process, I mix my paints using natural mineral and earth pigments and egg yolk with white wine vinegar. This technique I learned studying Byzantine iconography. There's going to be an activity we're calling playing portraits. So that's an opportunity for families, but for all visitors really, um, to kind of learn through play. And the clothes relate to some of the portraits that are on display and using those kind of playful resources just to think about clothing in portraiture and how that impacts on a portrait, on identity, and a fun way just to engage with the collection. Young people have been really interested in some of the different styles of painting. So we have portrait workshops where we take schools around and those three pictures particularly have really drawn them because I think they speak to a different generation. It really spoke to secondary school teachers and students and the things that they were looking at and investigating at school. I think it will get a, a wider audience purely because the interest level you're kind of interested in people who reflect you I suppose. And we can have these really great conversations about today and also reference similar conversations that were, have been happening in the past around identity, gender, uh, social class and all of these issues that are really important to talk about.